Believe it or not, there's yet another new book in the Middle School Worst Years of My Life series. It's called Middle School, Dog's Best Friend. Life in middle school is finally starting to seem bearable to Rafe Cachadorian until Rafe spots his grandma standing in the free meal line at the local soup kitchen. In order to help bring in more money, Rafe comes up with a brilliant plan, a dog walking business that soon turns into a huge money making neighborhood empire. Well, it's brilliant until two horrible twins launch the Great Dog War by sabotaging Rafe's flyers and stealing his customers. I could tell you more, but you get the idea. If you've enjoyed the middle school series up to now, you'll enjoy this one too. And if you haven't been reading this series, you should really check it out. Walking Wounded is book five in the Vietnam series. Morris, Rudy, Ivan, and Beck were best friends. So when one of them was drafted into the Vietnam War, the others signed up too. They promised to look out for one another. They pledged to come home together. Now that pledge has been broken. One of the four has been killed in action and the remaining three are the only men alive who know the awful truth about their friend's death. Find out what happened in Walking Wounded by Chris Lynch. Peter Nimble fans, the third book in the series is here and it's called Sophie Choir and the Last Story Guard. It's been two years since Peter Nimble and Sir Toad rescued the Kingdom of Hazelport. In that time, they've traveled far and wide in search of danger. Now they've been summoned for a new mission, to find a 12-year-old book mender named Sophie Choir. Sophie knows little beyond the four walls of her father's bookshop, where she repairs old books and dreams of escaping the confines of her dull life. But when a blindfolded boy and his talking cat-horse companion show up with a rare and mysterious book, she finds herself pulled into an adventure beyond anything she's ever read. If you haven't read the other two Peter Nimble books, it's all right to read this one. You can read the books out of order. And heck, I'd read it just to find out what a cat horse is. I think there's one on the cover and it looks kind of weird. This week I have another ebook for you in the Twice Told Tales series. Once, or twice, upon a time, a boy found an old house, all sealed up and impossible to enter. In this retelling of Sleeping Beauty, the house is called the Sofa House, and everyone says it's haunted. But when Brendan finds a way in, he learns there are even more secrets than he imagined inside the sealed up house. I have one copy of this book in print, but you can access unlimited copies of the book using your Destiny app. Nothing in Owen's life has been right since his father died in prison, accused of a crime Owen is certain he didn't commit. Monroe, the tech geek at school, might finally bring the means to clear his father's name by letting him use an animus, a device that lets users explore genetic memories buried within their own DNA. Under the guidance of Monroe, Owen and a group of other teenagers go into a memory they all share within their DNA the 1863 draft riots in New York City. Owen is, and his companions find themselves tested on the violent streets of New York and their experiences in the past will have far-reaching consequences in the present. The Last Descendants was a hot book in the book fair, so reserve a copy if you want to read it soon. Tess loves math because it's the one subject that she can trust. There's always just one right answer, and it never changes. But then she starts algebra and is introduced to variables, which seem to be everywhere in eighth grade, not just in math problems. When even your friends and parents can be variables, how in the world do you find out the right answers to the really important questions like what to do about a boy you like or who to go to when someone's done something really bad? Will Tess's life ever stop changing long enough for her to figure it all out? Find out in Secrets, Lies, and Algebra. Followers was featured in the book fair, and it's about a girl named Brianna who's an aspiring actress and attends a special school for the arts. When she loses out on a starring role in the school's production of Hamlet, Brianna agrees to be the drama department social media director and starts tweeting updates. 
But then a body is discovered in the theater, none other than Brianna's rival for the starring role. Somebody then starts tweeting predictions about more murders and the body count starts to rise. Brianna has to unmask the murderer before she becomes the next victim. I read this book a couple of weeks ago and it was pretty good. All right, people, see the cover of this innocent looking book? Don't be fooled. There's some major drama going on in there. The first month of school, 13 year old Anna Collette finds herself dumped by her best friend, Danny, who suddenly wants to spend eighth grade, quote, hanging out with different people. Deserted by her mom, who's in the hospital recovering from a suicide attempt, trapped in a house with her dad, a new baby sister, and a stepmother young enough to wear her sorority sweatshirt with pride. And if that isn't all bad enough, she's stuck at a lunch table with Shauna, the eyebrow plucker, and Sarah Beth, the Irish stepper, because she has no one else to sit with. Find out how Anna works out all of this mess in Where You'll Find Me. I'm sorry guys, I don't know how I ended up featuring so many scary books in my final media moment before Christmas, but that's just kind of how it worked out. And I saved a really good one for last. Took has all the elements of a classic Mary Downing Hahn story. A brother and sister who've been uprooted from their home and forced to move to an unfriendly new one. A rundown old farm surrounded by dark woods miles from town. Local bullies and mean teachers. A man-eating razorback hog named Bloody Bones. And an evil witch called Old Auntie. When the sister vanishes, her brother knows she's been took and he must summon all his courage to confront old auntie and get his sister back alive. Mary Downing Hahn writes some of our most favorite creepy tales, and you won't be disappointed by this one. I read it a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, I read a lot of books, and have to say it's one of her best. It was featured in the book fair, and I not only have print copies, but there are also three ebook copies of it available as well. Get yours today. Mrs. Mullinax's classes were in last week, and they pulled off a little mannequin challenge surprise for me. Here it is. Wasn't that terrific? They really did a good job. And honestly, I don't think the library has been that quiet in years. Okay, it's time for another update on the top 16. Although I have to say, absolutely nothing changed between last week and this week in books 1 through 10. However, Ghosts has moved up four places from last week. Roller Girl is up three. There's no change in all the lovely bad ones. Diary of a Wimpy Kid, The Ugly Truth went down three. Life as we knew it went down three. Guinness World Records is still in 16th place. And the raft has sunk, taking with it House of Dark Shadows. I am getting more and more excited about March Madness. And I just can't wait till we start the tournament. Well, here we are almost at the end of 2016 already. I hope you've been enjoying the media moments as much as I've enjoyed making them, and I hope that you've found some really good books to read. I can't wait to reveal some of the awesome new books that I've got waiting for you when we come back in 2017. I'm going to be reading a bunch of them over the vacation. Speaking of the vacation, we'll be out of school for two weeks, and some of you may not have taken home enough to read. Please keep in mind that we have 374 ebook titles available 24 hours a day, 
and then 114 of them have unlimited copies. So if you have a 6th or 7th grade tablet or any device that has internet connections, such as a smartphone or a Chromebook, you have the ability to check out one of the GMS eBooks any time of the day. If you owe a fine or a book to the library, you can still check out an eBook. Nobody has an excuse for not reading at GMS. I hope you have a safe and wonderful and happy Christmas vacation, and I look forward to seeing you back in 2017. Before I close, I have a special message to share with you from Pootie Cat. Merry Christmas.